So we're approaching the end of yet another riding season, or at least you might be. Down here in Texas, we can ride all year long. I mean, it does get a little toasty with a mild 110 degrees for like five weeks straight, but we're working on an anti-gooch juice spray for your seat here at Yammy Noob Labs to keep your seat from smelling like the southbound end of a northbound cow. Unfortunately though, it's not going to work for all your gear. And if you're like a lot of riders, you spend the entire season sweating through your gear and maybe hitting it with some Febreze now and again when it gets a little whiffy. But with some downtime ahead of you, it's time to look into replacing that old stanky worn out gear with some new stuff. And today we're going to look at the best cruiser gear you can buy. I know it might sound like an oxymoron considering the stereotypical cruiser boy image is a dude in a t-shirt with no helmet, but some guys actually do wear protective gear on their cruisers. And for those of you, I've collected a few helmets, jackets, boots, gloves, and pants to keep you safe, but also keep you from looking like a highlighter yellow ADV nerd in an aero stitch banana suit. I'm not going to be setting any price limits, nor am I going to spend a lot of time on prices themselves since they're subject to change, but if you're at all interested in picking up any of these items that I mentioned, check the links below. They're Revzilla affiliate links, which means that if you click on them, you'll be helping the channel out. Now, here's one piece of gear you just can't live without. Whether you're a leather daddy cruiser boy or a gimp suit wearing fast boy, and that's a Cardo system. We don't normally do ad reads for Cardos, but they've been a loyal longtime partner for the channel, and they make the best motorcycle comm system money can buy. Yam and I have been using our Pack Talk bolts to help us film our dual vlogs, and they work flawlessly. I also use a Pack Talk Slim on my off-road helmet, and I love it. The JBL speakers are loud enough that I can't even listen to them at full volume with earplugs in while I'm going down the highway, so you're not going to have an issue with hearing your music. If you ride solo and all you want is music, they've got a comm system for you that'll save you some cash. And if you click the link down below and use the code YAMMY, you'll get 20% off your order. Do yourself a favor and get the best comm system out there and be a real boy like us. Speaking of real boys, you probably want to look the part on your cruiser because motorcyclists are vain creatures. Even if you think you're not, how often have you looked over and tried to catch your reflection on a car door or glass window while you're out riding? Don't worry, we've all done it and you don't want to look like some at-gat nerd all the time. So we're going to start off our list today with my choice for a stealthy jacket that's safe but doesn't actually look like a motorcycle jacket. And my pick is the Revit Bison Overshirt for when you want to look like a lumberjack but don't have the intent amount of back hair to keep you from getting road rash in your discount thrift store flannel shirt. First off, this jacket is waterproof-ish. It's got a Hydrotex layer baked into the outside. Now, Hydrotex isn't the best thing for waterproofing that you can find, but most riders don't ride through a monsoon, and this is going to be more than enough to get you where you need to go and keep your top half dry in light rain. It's also packing some reinforcement in all the right spots, so your shoulders, elbows, back, and then it's got less resistant but more breathable material everywhere else. This this means when you go for a tumble, you're not going to get road rash, but you're also not going to cook like a summer sausage when you're stuck in traffic. My favorite part of this overshirt, though, is the Revit C Smart Armor. That stuff is as strong as D3O, but somehow it's way thinner and about as flexible as a contortionist stuffing themselves into a suitcase. It's crazy how low profile this armor is. You won't look like you're wearing any armor at all and it feels great. I actually bought myself some of this C Smart armor for my leather Dianese jacket, which probably voids some sort of warranty, but I absolutely love this stuff. As for fitment, if you're built like me and I'm six foot three and I wear a 2X t-shirt, Revit tends to run a little tight in the arms, so I would size up just a bit. Plus, you want your shirt to look a little bit baggy when you're on a cruiser. But what about a real jacket? You're definitely going to want leather so you can blend in. And while I have a Harley Davidson Willie G Skull Limited Edition jacket that I absolutely love to bits, there are better choices that won't cost you $500 and brand Harley Davidson on your sleeve. My choice actually is a lesser known option, the first manufacturing Vendetta jacket. The reason I like this jacket is that it's sheepskin and not cow. Cowhide takes a lot of time to break in properly. It's also really heavy. Sheepskin admittedly is not as durable in a slide, but on the street you're not going to be sliding for very long anyway. It's also on the cheaper side since it doesn't ship with armor, but even if it did ship with the pads, I'd suggest slapping that Revit armor in there anyway since it's lower profile and more flexible. It's got a removable hoodie and full venting for when it gets warmer, but the thing to realize is that if it gets anywhere close to 100 degrees where you live, this is a spring and fall jacket only. When it comes to leathers, I always go one size up because they can be really restrictive if you get the wrong size. However, they do claim a quote-unquote generous American cut, which means that it's got a lot of space for a beer belly, so keep that in mind. 
I'd like to take a quick second and include a women's jacket as well, because it's not just guys out there on the real bikes, and my choice for a women's jacket is the Street and Steel Athena. It's got pads from the manufacturer, but you already know about the Revit C-Smart stuff, so we'll skip over that, and it's got a removable thermal layer, a mesh liner to keep air flowing when it gets toasty. It's also got a waist adjustment so you can get just that right fit. Unfortunately, I can't help you out with sizing, seeing as I'm a giant man, so definitely go try it on if you can. Now, jackets are all well and good, but the single most valuable piece of safety gear you can buy is a full-face motorcycle helmet. Now, I know die-hard cruiser boys might think that that ruins the whole rebel aesthetic, but it's better to keep your noodle intact than feel the wind in your beard, so I'm recommending the Icon Air Flight. Now, personally, I hate the look of these helmets, but it is an ECE-rated helmet that means that you're actually going to be protected in the event of an accident, since we all know the DOT system is garbage. I know that full face look might not be your thing, but Icon makes roughly 400,012 variants of the Air Flight, so you can pick your favorite color from a subtle one tone to the loudest color vomit rainbow unicorn fart color scheme you can think of. They also have a bunch of different face shields, from clear to smoke to gold tinted to pink. Whatever you want with an Icon, you can probably get it. It's also got a bunch of vents to keep air flowing in traffic. However, Icons do tend to be a little bit heavier than other more racy helmets like the RF-1200 and the Air Flight is no exception. It's almost 4 pounds, which is not great, but you do get used to it. The best part, though, is that the pads are removable and washable, so when your helmet starts to smell like an old gym bag, you can pop the pads out and clean them. They say not to machine wash the pads, but I do it all the time and I haven't noticed any negative effects. But maybe you want the option of wearing a three-quarter helmet and a full-face helmet. Well, you're gonna need a modular. A word of warning though, modulars are always a lot heavier than a single piece full face helmet, and if it's not, you best prepare your anus because it is going to cost you. My pick for a modular helmet is the HJC i90. It's dirt cheap, but it does have the ECE sticker, which is nice. It comes in a handful of simple colors, and it's got a drop down sun visor. If you want to get some air moving, just flip the lid up and you're going to get all the airflow that you could ever want, but you also get all the protection of a full face helmet when you have that chin bar down. It's the best of both worlds. I'm not going to actually include any three quarters or half helmets because they're way less protective and I urge you not to wear one. If it's between a three quarter helmet and no helmet, however, do take the three quarter lid. Next up are gloves and these are one of the best ways to add some style to your look. Since we're talking cruiser gear today, you're going to want leather. And when you want a nice leather glove, no one makes them better than Dionese. I've been rocking Dionese gloves for years and I love them so much that I wore a whole through my last pair. If you want a good looking short cuff leather glove, look no further than the Dionese Blackjack. They've been making them for a while and it's all goatskin leather so you get good feel through the bars and it's vented to let air through. I also appreciate the fact that the knuckle armor is a little bit more subdued because personally I don't want to feel like I'm riding around with a pair of knuckle dusters on. Don't let that fool you though because these are more than enough to keep your little fingies from getting ganked up in a drop and thanks to the impact protection on the palms, you're protected in a hands first fall. The best part is the classic styling. They look like an old school driver's glove with the open hole near the wrist, which will give you some interesting tan lines, but it's another reason to talk about how you ride with a normie. It would be remiss of me not to mention a work glove with all my cruiser gear because it is a fairly common choice, and for this one we go back to first manufacturing with their Roper glove. It's dirt cheap at $30, but you won't get any armor with it. That's the sacrifice you tend to make when you get a work glove, so if you decide to go that route, know that you're not going to get much more than just abrasion resistance. Since you all know my stance on riding jeans, or more importantly, Ryan F9 said it was okay to not wear riding jeans, let's skip right down to the last piece of gear you'll need, and that's a good set of riding boots. I've seen people wear work boots, seen them wear vans, seen them wear cowboy boots, but in a wreck, none of them are going to stand up like an actual motorcycle boot. Ah, but Spite, I got full shank boots with steel toes. I'll be fine. Well, what happens when you drop your 600 pound motorcycle on your foot. You're going to crush your ankle like a can of Pringles falling down a flight of stairs. You need something with actual crush protection, and that's why I chose the TCX Fuel WPs. They look like a pair of stove pipes, but they have a solid ankle protector built in, as well as heel and toe protection. They also go up your calf and have no laces, meaning that nothing can get caught on your shifter or your brake. Plus, zippers and Velcro means you don't even need to know how to tie your shoes. In my experience, TCX boots are super comfortable comfortable, hold up well, and you can wear them around all day without feeling like you're in motorcycle boots. 
And just like that, you're dressed up like a real cruiser boy. Maybe if you look the part, all the Harley boys will stop giving you grief every time you show up on your Suzuki. Actually, that's not really likely. But at least you know you paid less than they did for their HD gear. Yours is safer and more stylish. Hey, you adorable little squid. Thanks for watching the video. Why don't you click on this one right here and keep watching? Don't worry. I'll wait. Just like this. Click the video. Do it now.